Hollywood. Lieber Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, brings you the Lux Radio Theater. scene is High Tor, a mountain overlooking the Hudson River and the town of Haverstraw. Nearby is another mountain, or rather its remains, for bulldozers and steam shovels have been digging it away, pulling out the valuable trap rock which was its heart. But High Tor on this soft summer evening is still untouched, magnificent, serene. And on its eastern slope sit a boy and a girl watching the twilight gather across the waters of the great river. Glad you came. Of course, darling. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's tremendous. Look, Judy, it's a quarter of a mile straight down to the Tappan Zee. You can see 15 miles of river north and south. I grew up looking at it. And you want to go on looking at it for the rest of your life. That's right. Old Hendrick Hudson came up that river just about 300 years ago and lost a ship right below us. They say the crew climbed up on this tour to keep a lookout for the fleet that never came back. And they say on dark nights before a storm, you can see them. Have you seen them, Ben? Oh, maybe. Can't be sure. Pretty wild around here when it storms. It's pretty wild around here when you talk. Well, fetch out the supper and I'll shut up. What'd you bring me? Sandwiches. And it's dinner, not supper. Dinner, that's what I said. Fetch out the dinner. We won't quarrel tonight, will we, Ben? We always quarrel. No, Judy, no fights. Too nice a night. No saying, look. Hmm? Down there, you see where I'm pointing? Where? Oh, it's a man. An old man. Who is he? That's Indian John, last of his tribe. He found his burying spot last week. Burying spot? Yeah, the place I'll dig is great. You're joking. No, no, we got an understanding. When he feels it coming over him that it's his death day, he'll let me know. And then I'll dig him in so the crows and the foxes can't get at him. You see, he's all alone in the world. But you couldn't, Van, without a permit, a, a burial permit. Let's see, what's this? Beef. Mm, I like beef. Judy... This getting old and dying and crawling into the ground was invented way back before medical examiners and taxes and all of that. What does he care for permits? What do I care? What do you care for anything? Now, Judy, not tonight. I mean it, Van. Every time I come up here, I hope I'll find you changed, grown up. But you don't change. You never do. Uh, you never will. What do you want? I want you to come down off your mountain and join the human race. The human race? Look south, down the river. New York City's down there. What a fine old view I'll have when the A-bombs start popping. You can have the human race, sweetheart. I'll stay up here. And what about me? I hope that you'll stay with me. What'll we use for money? You don't need the stuff. Pap worked that out. All you need is a place to sleep and something to eat. I've never seen the time I couldn't find a meal on this mountain. Rainbow trout, jug hair, something in season right around the Zodiac. Sam. It's hopeless, isn't it? Oh, let's talk about something else. Ah, look here. Big news. I know it's bank robbed of $25,000. Says they got away, too. Now, there's something, honey. You know I won't take an ordinary job in a factory or an office, but how about me as a bank robber? Oh, that nest egg you're always talking about. Twenty-five grand would make a nice little egg indeed. It is hopeless. I knew it before I came tonight. Uh-oh. Looks like we got company. Bad company. Hey, Mac. Yeah. Any houses around here? Houses? Up here? Yeah, a fellow named of Van Dorn. Supposed to have a cabin along this ridge somewhere. Van Dorn. Van Dorn. Your full name is Van Van Dorn. Kind of a hermit. We want to do a little business with him. I'm sorry, gentlemen. I wish I could help you out. What sort of business, if it's not too secret? Little deal involving this mountain. We want to buy it. Sent him a flock of letters, no answer. 
You offered money? $2,000. This is Mr. Van Dorn. Oh, that's so. Yeah, and no deal. I wish you'd keep your big mouth shut. Well, Mr. Van Dorn, my name is Biggs, Art J. Biggs. This is my partner, Judge Skimmerhorn. Uh, pleased to make the acquaintance. I'll bet you are. Judy, I want you to meet the biggest crook this side of the Hudson. <laughs> oh, the great sense of humor, Mr. Van Dorn. Judge Skimmerhorn of the Skimmerhorn Skimmerhorns. He's a leg man for his father, a yes man for Biggs here, and a, a vice president of our local industry, that trap rock company. Uh, Mr. Van Dorn, let's get down to cases, huh? We'd like to buy this property. You like the view, I suppose. It certainly is a view. You wouldn't want to spoil it, of course. You wouldn't want to move in with a million dollars worth of machinery and cut the guts out of a mountain the way you did with Little Tor, would you? We're in business. Not with me. You say 2000 Yes, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll make it three. $3,000, and I'll give you the check right now. No deal. And incidentally, Skimmerhorn Sr. offered my father 10000 and he wouldn't sell. Dan! Van, you're right. Hold out. I'm not holding out, Judy. Don't... Now, you keep out of it. Now, Mr. Van Dorn, we like to be generous. Generous, huh? Uh, to put it straight, we'll give you $4,000. Oh, now it's 4000 Go on, get moving. Otherwise, it is quite possible you'll be held incompetent by the court and a guardian appointed. What? Yes, by George, and anybody that won't take money when it's offered to him is incompetent. You'll take it now or not at all, Mr. Van Dorn. I don't go mountain climbing every day with a blank check in my pocket. You'd better get started back down that trail before it gets real dark. You might slip and fall a few thousand feet and break your ugly fat necks. You regret this. In fact, the sooner you get started, the better. There's something funny about this mountain when it doesn't like someone. Every storm on the Tappan Zee climbs up here and wraps itself around high tour and blazes away at what you've got. Steam shovels, bulldozers, anything newfangled. Hit one of your shovels last week and killed a man. And I've got a premonition that something might happen to you. You know something? He really is crazy. Yes, let him talk. He's going to sound great. Oh, what? What's that? Oh, nothing much. A section of cliff coming down across the trail. I've been expecting it for the last two years. Oh. You better go down this way. I've been ducking those vultures for years. What do you do now? Fight them. And what about us? What about us? Goodbye, Van. Are you going? Yes. Well, I'll walk you down. No, I'm a big girl, Van. You sit here and guard your rock, your precious rock. You coming tomorrow? No, no more, Van. I'm through. You had a choice, and you chose high tour. You're in love with your mountain. Well, keep your mountain. Just like that. Just like that. Good night. Judith. Good night, Ben. Goodbye. It has become quite dark now on Van Dorn's stone strewn mountain. The owner sits motionless, peering intently at the slope above. He's not alone. Above his head, the silent procession moves toward the summit. Six men and a woman. The men wear knickerbockers, large black hats, and silver buckles on their shoes. And Dawn watches them pass. Uh oh. Looks like we're in for a storm. A little behind the others, the young woman talks to a stocky, middle aged officer. DeWitt. You are Lisa. Tell Asher to post a watch. Not I. You tell him. He's your husband. No. He'd call me discontent, a carping wife. Discontent is right. When the half moon returns and carries us back to the Zadaze and home and friends, then will I be happy once more. Ah, yeah, pretty soon now, Lisa. Pretty soon the ship will come. At first, the days were like years. Now the years are as days. And I'm afraid for us. Why? I don't know. I tremble to think on it. I. It's these strange new men. You've seen them too. Sorcerers, that's what they are. These new world devils. And they've laid a spell here. We must break it ere we can go home. 
I see this very clearly. Break the spell? But how? Fall in love with one of them. Oh, that will undo them. Yeah, and I'll choose me out one of their female mermaid witches and set my heart on her and <laughs> become a man again. I gave my love long ago. It's no help. The captain? Ah, he is the witch too. Come, Lisa, stout heart. We'll fight these devils and win the day. And then I can go home? Pick one, fall in love, break the spell, and then we'll all go home. Fathead, why didn't you send somebody up here with a subpoena like I told you? Oh, shut up and think about this. With both trails out, how are we going to get down off this mountain? Hey, what's that over there? Where? On the edge of that chasm. Steam shovel. On Van Dorn's property. I had it moved in this afternoon. Other side of the gorge is where our property starts. Dumbhead. He could sue us. How did I know the deal was going to fall through? Anyhow, we can go sit in it when the rain starts. Swell. And maybe get electrocuted. <laughs> And now, below, two new figures scramble up the slopes. They are young, in jeans and leather jackets. One carries a small satchel. Hold it, buddy. Hold it, no more. What's the matter, Elkis? Oh, I got no wind. Ah, oh, the stinking state troopers. Uh, we're safe now. Safe? <laughs> we'll get 400 years for this. Shut up. Bank robbers. The stuff I let you talk me into. Look, pal, we got 25,000 bucks in this satchel, and half of it belongs to you, so quit squawking. You didn't have to wreck the car, though. You'd be wearing bracelets right now if I hadn't. Where does he think he's following us, see? You'll blow that fire alarm all the way to Bear Mountain Bridge. So what do we do now? Down the other side and pick up the car. Holy smokes, look there. Where? Coming up the trail. It's Judge Skimmerhorn. Does he know you? Sure he knows me, 400 years! Uh, we're out climbing, see? Hikers, see? On a picnic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play it cool, see? What about the satchel? Huh? The satchel, the satchel! Behind this rock. Hello there! Hiya! Why, I believe it's Buddy Bickle hopping. Uh, evening, Judge, sir. Well, you're a long way from home, Buddy. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, out for a hike. Yes, sir. Uh, oh, my feet are killing me. I think I'll just sit down on this nice flat rock. <laughs> ah, better. Say, buddy, this is a funny time to be taking a hike. It's uh, sort of a, a dare, a bet. Yes, sir. Well, boys will be boys. <laughs> I don't suppose you brought some food along. Frankly, I'm famished. No, no food. That's odd, campers without food. Uh, well, uh, we ate before we left, sir. Nice going. Yeah, what's that? I say we better be going. Uh, gotta get to the top, you know. Gotta keep climbing. Huh? Come on, dope. What about the you-know-what? Later. Good night, Kent. Yeah, good night, boys. Hope you win your bet. Yes, sir, Judge. Yes, sir. Come on, fatso. Let's go. Go where? I'm sitting right here, pal. No more stumbling around in the dark for me. A man could fall off a cliff, get himself hurt. Guess you're right. Well, <sighs> what's that? Oh, a satchel. Yeah? Somebody's moldy luggage. People always throwing junk around. Got that out of the way. I wish I had something to eat. If we had a phone, we could order a helicopter. I can't eat, huh? Going to sleep. Maybe you've never tried adjusting yourself to igneous limestone. I'm about to try it now. You have my sympathy. Thanks. <sighs> you know, we could have done all this the honest way. Dear boy. Sorcerers' tools. And this, this strangely fashioned bug which they flung from them, what can it hold? Hmm? He thinks it's secured most curiously. Hey? 
it tried to bite me. Ah, take heart, my dear David. Being already damned and bewitched, what more terrible thing can happen? Nothing. I pray. The, uh, the contents here. Yeah. What is the strange green parchment stuff? Hmm. Curious hieroglyphics. Hmm, that portrait of their devil king, huh? Yeah, I have none of it. Ah, but this is the bottom. Copper pieces by the great Jib Boom. Copper pieces, a fortune of them, enough to purchase a ship if these foreign devils would but sell. Hey, judge. Uh, do you believe in apparitions? Well, no, go to sleep. There's a figure of fun standing by our feet, right out of a masquerade ball. Well, tell it to give... Ah, uh, holy smoke. See what I mean? See here, devils. I'm a plain-spoken man, and I'll come to the point. I want to buy a boat. I'm asleep. I'm sound asleep, dreaming. You've come to the wrong shop, sailor. You have no boat? No boat. Go away. Will you please? Will you please? The plague on you, lying, dastardly foreign devils. I'll go, but know this. I fear you not. I'll break your spell. Did you see what I saw? What I saw wasn't possible. Uh, Did you fake that thing? Fake it? I saw it. Oh, no. Nobody saw what I saw. I didn't either. I've got a family to support. They're not going to put me away anywhere. Whatever it is, it left a calling card. Looks like he ate his lunch here. Supposing a thing like that eats lunch. These envelopes. There's something in them. Well, help yourself. I want none of it. Come her on. Know what this is? Oh, let me sleep. It's the green stuff, Skimmerhorn. A big, fat slice of money pie. Money pie? Fives and tens. Yeah. Well, bless the poor little Dutchman's heart. Yeah. And after all we said about him, too. Do you think he left it? It wasn't there before. Oh, look at it all. <laughs> before, I always had to work for it or steal it. Never till tonight have I been wakened by a little man in a big hat fetching it to me in packages. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh-oh, Daddy, look at this envelope. Manuit Bank and Trust Company. Shorty's a bank robber? Looks that way. Guess we ought to return this, huh? That'd be the proper thing to do. These are probably marked. No. I read in the paper all small bills and unmarked, no record of the serial numbers. You don't say so. I've known the president of that bank for years. He's a dishonest rat. Big T. 50 50? 50 50. Ah. Come on, come on, let's give you that. <laughs> hey, come on, you know what? Who won? No taxes, Daddy, no taxes. Quick, 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 duck it. Here comes that crazy Van Dorn. Oh. I thought you two would be home in bed by now. Oh, sorry, Mr. Van Dorn, but with the trails out, we thought we'd better spend the night, go down in the morning. Well, you won't like it, but be my guest. Thanks. Oh, by the way, that steam shovel. A mistake. We'll move it tomorrow. By noon, or it goes over the cliff. No, see right here. you are, Mr. Van Dorn, first thing in the morning. In fact, Judge, let's mosey over there right now, where we'll be nearer the light. Ah, right you are. Mr. Diggs. Good night, Mr. Van Dorn. Good night. Van Dorn watches them go. At his feet is a crumpled ball of paper. He picks it up, smooths it. It's an envelope which he reads without expression in pocket. And now before him, approaching through the rocks, he sees a girl, young, beautiful. Do you hear my voice? Yes. And you can see me? Yes. Yes, I can see you. I've seen you many times. I know you. You are not like the other wizard men with their machines. You are kind. How do you know? When I was most lonely in the spring, I made a garden of your strange new world's wildflowers. I saw you come there and I hid. And when I looked again... A new flower had been planted with the others. A wild orchid. 
It was your garden? Yes. Do you know the names of all the flowers? Yes, I do. Teach me the names. What is the tall, three-petaled one that's almost black, the red so dark? That's Trillium. Give me your hand. And speaking of flowers, tell me your name. It's Lisa. You're cold, Lisa. And your eyes are sad. Why so sad? I'm puzzled here and lost. Is it so different for you? Keep my hand and tell me. In these new times, are all men shadows? All men lost? Sometimes I stand here at night and look out over the river when a fog covers the lights. Then if it's dark enough and I can't see my hands and I'm alone, well, I don't know who I am. Maybe I'm cloud and maybe dust. I might be as old as time. I'd like to think I knew. A man gets that way, standing, staring at darkness. But right now, at this moment, I don't seem to care. At this moment. Look, you. When the wizards come to tear the mountain down, I'll have no place. I'll be gone then. No, they won't get this mountain. It's mine, and it'll stay mine if I have to shoot them as they come. The mountain's mine. And you are to make your garden where you like. Is it the light I feel come flooding back in me? Light? Or their charms broken here, seeing your face? Your hands are warm. I'm not cold now. For an instant, I'm not cold seeing your face. This is your wizardry. Let me stand here and see you and be with you. Love me a little. Come, Lisa. We'll go to your garden. It's gone. Empty. All of it? It was those two fat shots, the judge and the other guy. Oh, we'll get 400 years for this. Oh, will you shut up? I got a thing. Oh, I think it won't do any good, Elkins. Take them to state troopers. Quick, behind a rock. You see them? Yeah. Six of them. The leader's a little guy. Oh, that was close. Close? Only those aren't troopers. Huh? Those big hats, they fool you. Boy, what funny costumes. Yeah. Hey, look, they're going over there towards the steam shovel. Pretty weird, huh? Yeah. Real nervous. Well, that's it. Twelve thousand four hundred and ninety-eight dollars apiece. How <laughs> you pretty stuff. Oh, you money pie. Say, I wonder what happened to the other four bucks. Don't look at me. I think the little guy kept it. Yeah, come to think of it, his hands were full of pennies. Wish he'd come along now and show us how to get down off of here. If somebody would work that steam shovel, we could get in the bucket and ride right over to the other side. Isn't it too bad we're both such crooks? How do you mean? Otherwise, we could draw lots. One send the other over. Uh-uh. I know you, Big Z, old boy. You'd kill me for the amount of money I'm carrying right now. That's what I mean. Ain't it a shame? Awful. Hey, what's that? Yeah. It's the... Uh... Oh, no. It's oh, sure no. and he's brought the gang. Him. He's whispering in the big one's ear and pointing. Yeah, uh, hi, fellas. If you want the money back, you can have it back if you want it. We don't want it. Thomas. Now he's moving over to the steam shovel. Look what he's doing. That's the scoop. They're rigging it. The way they're gesturing, I think they want us to get in. Oh. Is that, is that it, uh, fellows? 
Going to swing the judge and me across the chasm to the other side, huh? Well, what do we do? I think we do what they want. It seems to be their show. All right. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I guess I'm not as active as I used to be. <laughs> move over and make room for old Dad. Watch your Take a deep breath, that's all. We aren't going to fit in this thing. Just watch the air. What do you calling names? Yeah. All in, I guess. <laughs> Look at the little guy. He's got his crew on the winch. About there. Oh. Uh, nice going, oh. fellas. Oh, here we go. We're kind of high up, aren't we? Uh, I tell you what, fellas, uh, you better pull it down again. We'll just wait until morning. I'm getting sick at my stomach, boys. You'd better make it snappy. It gives me the megrims to look down this way. No, don't rock the boat, you fool. A thousand miles straight down. I'm going to be sick. You better take us down, fellas. It's no good. You, you can't make it. Thank you, Captain. Thank you, Captain. They're leaving. Leaving us like this. Hey, you wouldn't leave us up here, would you? Hey! You want the money? You can have it, you know. Come on back, fellas. Come on back. A joke is a joke, but this thing's liable to drop any minute. Gone. I'm going to be sick. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you don't think they'll really leave us here, do you? I don't know, and I don't care. I wish I was dead. Then uh, keep oh, your hands to yourself. What are you trying to do? Pick my pocket? Oh, pick your pocket, you bubble. Take your dirty feet out of my face. Where's my wallet? Where's my wallet? How do I know? Probably sitting on... <laughs> yeah. yeah, look. Oh, I might have lost it. Uh, why don't you count your money just to make sure I didn't snatch some? I think I'll do just that. Yeah. You? Oh, I just dropped fourteen ten dollar bill. Do you know we're gonna die here? Oh, for a thousand and two. What? We're gonna die here. Oh no, four thousand and five. I can't die now. Four thousand and six. I'm not ready to die. Four thousand. Will you stop counting your money? We're going to be killed right in our own steam shovel. Well, say a prayer. No! I don't know how to say a prayer. You say when you're the judge. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, bless the bed that I lie on. You call that a prayer? Well, it's all I know. No! You just ain't getting closer. Say a prayer, a real prayer. Oh, Lord, you I never wouldn't do a thing like that. Corn, I don't know Hang how. us up in our own steam shovel. Hang us up in our own steam shovel. Hang us up in our own steam shovel. Oh, Father, you've been yes, kind to us. We've been kind to us. We never expected to get so easy. Don't spoil it now. Let's go! Look out! That was another back of the Why don't you tell him you'll give back the money? Because it's mine, and I won't. And you won't either. Now you've got it! Can't you keep anything to yourself? There's such a thing as being politic even to the Almighty. Now, Act Two of High Tour, starring William Holden as Van Dorn. <laughs> Six hours have passed, and the thunderstorm which rocked High Tor has blown itself up. In the great iron steam shovel are its two fat, miserable passengers. Their prayers have been answered. They are alive. Alive and asleep. They dream of the land of money pie. And on the edge of the cliff below the steam shovel, Mynheer DeWitt, our ancient stalwart, 
bravely and courageously bent on breaking the sorcerer's spell cast these long centuries over the abandoned Dutch crew. Mynheer DeWitt sits on a rock, smoothing a few bills with which he found blowing loose, and glares at the steam shovel's burden. I take your ease and rest, you doppelgangers. I'll beat you yet. With this green talisman will I defeat you. Or De Witt knows his sorcery. And what shall he wish for, now that he has the magic wishing papers? But woman, your a woman. Let my woman appear, O oh God of the numbered papers. Let her appear. Is somebody there? It works! Ah, De Witt. Ah, your man, De Witt. Over here, dear lady. Are you lost, too? Completely adrift, ma'am, on my own mountain. Oh, you live on the mountain? I do. Then you are acquainted with Van, Van Dorn. I have seen him about. Have you seen him tonight? I have. Where? In the arms of the captain's wife, and she a married woman of some years standing. And where was this? Aha. Uh-huh. I am a man of delicate sentiment, sweetheart. I would not expose your beautiful eyes to such dastardly moral treachery. Forgive me. I'll look elsewhere. But I assure you the lad's head over ears, ma'am. And loath you would be to interrupt him. However, a uh, pretty lass like yourself should have no trouble replacing one sailor man with another in these stirring times. Thank you. Uh, I, I am myself a notionable lad. Salt tears have been wept over me by one and another. No doubt. Mm. I'm a blunt man. Could you find it in your heart to love me? I'm sorry. No. You could save me from the air sorcery with but a single kiss. See, I have the talisman. Look, someone's coming. Ah, if there be, watch what soldierly stand old David makes in defense of a lady. Yeah. David, master of the horse pistol. Come out, children of the new Satan. Show yourselves in the light. Okay, shorty, let's drop the cannon. <laughs> they point toys at me. We don't want no trouble, shorty. Just hand over the money and we'll all go home to bed. Gee, Elkis, you sound just like Humphrey Bogart. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, okay, Jackson, get up the green stuff. Ah, the talisman. You want this, do you? That's the idea, Pally. Only we want all of us, the full 25G. Yeah, and put down the cannon, see? Put down the cannon, you're gonna be sorry, see? Watch how a man holds off fiends. Hey, look out! Let him have it! Look, you devils! I'm a patient man, but in one more moment, I shall blow you into the top and Z. Yeah? Too bad about you. Okay, buddy, take the money off him. Hey, hey, there's something funny about this guy. I can see right through him. Why not? He's full of holes in the tennis racket. No, no, I mean it. Look. Oh, mama, this is real nervous. The guy looks like television, like a church window. Yeah. Devils, ineffectual devils. I have the talisman, do you hear? Hey, Yelkis, I don't like this. One more. Right between the eyes. Nothing. Hey, let's blow. Me, I'm heading for Canada. <laughs> Same here, Elf. Same here. What's going on down there? Sounds like war. Island? Yes, sir, Shorty. Yes, sir. You can come out now, dear lady. Dear lady. Sweetheart. Get sucks that faithless happy. Gone and deserted me even as I defended her honor. Uh, hey, mister, how about letting us down out of here, huh? Hold your tongues, devils, or I'll pull the lanyard that opens the floor of your contraption and let you fall into oblivion. No, no, we, we'll be quiet, honest. No, oh, they're prating that disturb my aching heart. Come back, dear lady, but see how the first flickerings of dawn do pale the river's face. What? Look! It's there! The ship come at last to take us home! The day is won! The day is won! A 
And nobody likes this flower. I like it now. I used to think it was a weed, but now, well, it's a flower. Dandelion. And this is a buttercup. And here's a touch-me-not. The touch-me-not's a shoe. A tiny golden shoe with a hairspring latchet for bees to loosen. When did you part from Judas? Last evening. But it seems longer. You loved her very much? Yes. I love someone, too. I love him still. No, you're mine now. It cannot be. There's too much lies between us. Not for me. Even for you. You are weary? <sighs> well, the truth is that I sometimes sleep at night. Put your head in my lap. I'll hold you. Ah, there. Ah, nice. May I ask you something? Sure. There's so much that's changed. Must men still die? Oh, yes. Yes, they die. Tell me. Why it is I am as I am and not like you? I don't know, Lisa. Have I been enchanted here? Can these strange new wizards cast spells to hold wrecked mariners forever high on a mountain fringe? There are no wizards and no spells. Just men and women and money and earth, the way it's always been. It's not sorcery, then. Now, can it be men die and carry since no memory of death? Not gray, not lined, not stricken down, but stamped forever on a moving air, an echo and an image. Could this be how men die? It may be, Lisa. I love you when you speak. Then I am dead. And all the crew is dead. Oh, you are cruel to lie here warm and living. When you wake, we shall be parted. And you will have a world, but I'll have none. Sleep, sweet. Let me have your head on my knees. Only this night. And your brown hair on my finger. Oh. Are you Judas? Yes. The lad's asleep. But when he wakes, you will have him back. I don't know who you are. I'm but a friend of his. You left him bitter going away so lightly. I was bitter. And so we tried to play at being lovers, but it won't do. Why are you crying? Am I crying? You're strange. The dress you wear is strange, too. Who are you? I'm afraid of you. Afraid of tears and a voice out of long ago. It's all I have. Elisa, Elisa, the ship is on the river. Quick, there's haste. She must catch the tide downstream. Hush, the wit you'll wake him. Hmm. I... Who, who is this man? Her lad, but he was hurt and fell asleep. Ah, that could come quickly. The captain waits. Lisa, where are you going? The half moon, our ship, is on the river. And we must catch the tide. Would you leave me now? Yes, I must. No, Lisa, don't go. Your hurt's quite cured. And mine's past curing. Let me go with you. No. We are of different worlds. What do I care of worlds? Any world you have, I'll make it mine. Give me your hand again. They dare not take you from me. They dare not touch you, no matter who they are, where they're from. They have no hold on us. There were too many, many, many years. Put out your hand. See? The dawn points with one purple finger at a star to put it out. When it has quite gone out, then we'll be gone. Lisa, Lisa. The morning light strikes through us. And the wind that follows after rain tugs at our sails. And so we go. And welcome you are to the age, too. An age of witches and paper and paper money and paper men. So that a poor Dutch rape more man than the thickest of you. She never said goodbye. You were in love with her. 
She leaves the mountain barren now that she's gone. I came to tell you that I was wrong. Look. There's no ship at all. It faded into the dawn. And all the mist that hung about the tour, look how they lift, pouring downstream with the wind. Whatever it was was said or came between us. It's all gone now that it's daylight again. I came to say if only I could keep you. You should keep the tour or what you wished. I'm sorry I went. I'm sorry this has happened. But it has. And so... Should I keep the tour? Yes, if you like. I'll sell it if you'll stay. Won't you stay with me, Judy? I think I'd always hear you calling Lisa while I was standing by. I took a wrong turning once when I left you and went down the hill. And now it may never be the same. Now the curtain rises on Act Three of High Tor, starring William Holden as Van Dorn. A beautiful morning on the Hudson. The sun climbs, brightening the face of High Tor. And at the edge of the cliff, the great steam shovel gleams bright orange in the clear, fresh light. In the scoop dangling from the crane, Judge Skimmerhorn and Arthur J. Biggs greet the new day. I wish I was dead. Oh, shut up. I'm stiff all over. I'm tired. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. Wait till the sun comes up a little. We're going to be pan fried in this thing. Look. Look down there. There's more of those little people I give up. It's a trooper. A trooper? A trooper? We're saved. Well, listen. About this stuff in our pocket. Mum's the word. <laughs> uh. A beautiful morning. Yes, sir. I always say it's worthwhile being up early just to catch the sunrise. Hello! Look, he's got my father with him. Uh, uh, up here, Papa. Yeah, I know that, Trooper. That's Patsy. Hello, Patsy. Hey, you boys had the wife worried down in Letton Town. Been looking for you all night. Oh, here they are, Mr. Skimmerhorn. Good gravy. Here, let me sit down. Here's our... I climbed up here. I thought you were under that rock slide. I guess you're disappointed, huh, Papa? The next time you two go on a bat and spend a night up in a tree, you can stay there and sober up. We haven't been drinking, Papa. Ha! Oh, you tell them how it was, John. No, 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 you tell them. Well, well, you see, the whole thing is pretty complicated. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I've been through it. You wake up in the morning and you can't believe it's yourself. Hey, can you give me a hand with this, Mrs. Kimmel? No. Leave them up there. Huh? They had their good time. Now they can spend a few minutes paying for it. <laughs> well, okay. Gee, now I know what a hangover looks like. I tell you, we didn't even have a drink of water. What were you doing last night? Did you see Van Dorn? Sure, we saw him. Well, what did he say? He said no. And I suppose that took all night. We had an argument. And he chased you up a a crane, I suppose. No. Well, how did you get up there? We were hauled up. Who did that? You tell him, Mark. Oh, no, you tell him. (laughs) As a matter of fact, I don't think it happened. Well, you're up there. And if you didn't get drunk, how did you get there? Well, you see... First, we tried to negotiate with Van Dorn. Uh, you offered him the 25000 We offered him a fair price. You were authorized to say 25000 Well, we didn't get to that. We offered ten. Uh, thought you'd make a quick little profit on the company. No, uh, no. no. Uh, go on. Well, we couldn't get down because of the slide. So some sailors offered to let us down in this thing. Sailors! Up here, little men in big black hats. I see. 
Any elephants or snakes? <laughs> it sure sounds like delirium tremens, boy. Are you going to let us down out of this bucket? Not until you come across with the truth. Hello. Who are you? Oh, nobody in particular. I own the property. Oh, you're, you're Van Dorn. Well, I'm A.B. Skimmerhorn, Mr. Van Dorn, president of Ignis Blackrock. Now, look, let's not start that again. Uh, to be frank, uh, there may have been some misunderstanding, Mr. Van Dorn. Uh, those two were uh, hardly in condition to negotiate. But I can offer you a fair price for your land. Uh, what do you say to uh, 25000 No. 50000 Not interested. Well, I... Uh, I can't go over 50. Uh, but will you take a partnership in the company? No. Well, mm, uh, i tell you what, Mr. Van Dorn. Think it over. Take a few days. The offer stands. I'll think about it. Hey, look, here comes Budge, my partner. Got himself a couple of prisoners. Hey, Budge! Yo! Who you got there? Then do it. Bank robbers. They say the money's up here somewhere. All right, Elkis. Where was it the last time you saw it? He was practically sitting on it, the fat guy in a stink shovel. How about it, Judge? Preposterous. Well, he was. And then there was the little guy. That that was later. He had some of it. Oh, the little guy. Can you describe it? He was short and fat, a big black cat, carried a sawed-off shotgun and wore neat pants. And you could see right through him. Oh, yeah, you can see right through him. What? Yeah, that's right. You could see right through him. Oh, wise guy. Honest, I swear. We filled him full of bullets and he didn't move. I shot him through the head two feet away. It just made him mad. Yeah, a patsy. Take him away, buds. They're nuts. But he had the money. We saw him with the money. Hey, Van Dorn, you live up here. Did you hear any shooting last night? Sure, plenty. See a little guy in a big hat? Half a dozen of them. I suppose you can see right through them. Uh, part of the time. And uh, by the way, I can tell you where there's $30 of that money. Nowhere. On the ground behind you. Right under the shovel. Say, three $10 bills. How did you get there? Why don't you ask the gentleman up on the scoop? Drop any money, Judge? No, not a fact. Me neither. I suggest a question. What? Ask the judge if he picked up any weight during the night. Oh, what's the matter with you? Looks like he picked up a good deal. I'll think up my own question, thanks. Now, I might as well trundle these eggs back to jail, Butch. Whoever got the stuff, it's gone. Aren't you uh, going to help the judge down before you go? Oh, no bother. We'll get down. No hurry. We're all right. Take care of your prisoners. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, don't leave those poor fellows up in that cruel crane. It's inhuman. They've been up there all night. Yeah, I guess you're right. Come on, boys. Bear hand. No, 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 no. Oh. We're, we're fine. You run along. All right, boys. Let's swing it over this way before we lower them. Now they're over safe ground. Find which cable lets the scoop down. I wonder if this could be the right one. Oh, 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 oh. 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 Hey, Judge, you all right? I don't know. Get a doctor. He doesn't need a doctor. Look at that stuff all around him. Why, the dirty criminal. What he needs is an accountant. Now, Patsy, look. Look what it says on these bands. Huh? And you're at Bank and Trust Company. Stay where you are, Mr. Biggs. Oh. Orangeburg payroll. Ooh, the crooks. <laughs> this is an outrage. We don't know a thing about it. We're innocent. And besides, we'll give it back. Give it back? We got it back. And the two of you besides. Junior... Yes, Papa? Oh. Indian John is here to tell you, Van. This is his death day. All right, John. Shall we start? In a moment. Sure. I met him on the trail, Van. You can barely see. When I had lost the path halfway along the ridge, there at my feet I heard a woman crying. We came on together, for she led me. There'll be time for crying later, lady. And you, my friend, you must forget this mountain. Forget? Forget the mountain? I tore is now dead for you. This I know. 
Even as it passed from my people to yours, so now it must pass from you to these new men. Their mark is on it, and your time here is over. But let them come in, despoiling, for time is but a time, and these will not endure. Let them have this little hill and find your peace beyond. For there's no hill worth a man's peace while he may live and find it. John, should I sell Hightor? There is wilder land and there are higher mountains in the west. You will find them. Together. You and your woman. You must take her with you. Will you come, Judith? I remember Lisa. Was there a Lisa? I think she was my dream of you and me. And how you left the mountain barren once when you were gone. She was my dream of you and how you left the tour. Judith, say you'll come with me. All right, then. I'll come with you. It's time now. One last look at the rock. My rock. There's nothing made by these new men, high tower or cut or buildings by a lake that will not make good ruins. Ruins? This? Yes, in time. When these new men are gone or look aside only a little while, the white stone darkens, the wounds close. The roofs fall and the walls give way to rains. Nothing is made by man but makes, in the end, good ruins. Well, that's something. But I can hardly wait. Wait. <laughs> 